Hi there, uh, this is Nate McEwen, uh, graduate student at Iowa State University, uh, 2018, and I am doing a Rhino for Architecture students tutorial uh, with a series of videos that are going to be focused on doing um, examples of uh, easy construction of uh, architectural pavilions, the serpentine pavilions to be exact, um, and showing off how Rhino uh, can be used to create some uh, great pieces of architecture um, using uh, basic commands that all architecture students should know and use uh, when um, creating uh, early massing concepts in Rhino. And um, each module, as you can see over here in the layers panel uh, off to the right, uh, focuses on different um, aspects of Rhino that uh, uh, are used for modeling. Uh, the first one we're gonna do is modeled uh, mainly off curves. And then modules two, three, and four uh, incorporate curves, surfaces, uh, surfaces, and solids. And so uh, each module will be geared at certain commands uh, that will be very beneficial uh, to use. And so the basic format is going to go, um, we're going to practice and build over here off to the left. And I have example models um, here in the middle and uh, commands over here and which uh, we will use uh, and you can type into the command line or actually go and find in the ribbon um, and so these are all pretty uh, pretty basic um, but uh, when put together in the right way uh, can actually um, create a nice piece of architecture so um, and so uh, without further ado we can go ahead and get started uh, so we got three steps to each module uh, this one's gonna have basically the first step is draw a curve Second step is create your actual louver uh, that will actually be used to be arrayed along that curve. And then from there, we can actually turn that curve, the little line here, into an actual pipe. And so that will create the basic construction. And then we have this other piece that uh, is incorporated into um, uh, off the cons, uh, pavilion concept here. And so we'll use this plan to kind of get started. Uh, and uh, I'm going to start by drawing a curve. And I'm going to use the curves with um, the interpolate points. Uh, and that will actually, uh, that is a curve in which uh, the curve goes through the points. So it gives you a little bit of accuracy. Looks like I got my ortho on. So I'll go down here and turn that off. So now I can actually kind of move it about. Looks like I got my grid snap on too. So it's going to snap. So. We want to be able to create a little bit of organicness to this, so we're going to want to turn both of those off so we can have a little bit of play there. And so I'll make a decent amount of points to actually give this a nice curve. Um, and this, I'm actually creating um, as close as I can to the original uh, design, but uh, when doing this, you can actually feel free to kind of make your own sort of design here and plan. You can see how easy it is just drawing the couple curves. Um, something very basic, right? It's not too hard so far. And so uh, we have both of those and I believe we will want to put this onto a certain layer so that we know what we're drawing with. So I'm gonna actually go down here and create my own layer and this will be outside of everything and so we'll actually call this um we'll rename this uh module module one uh practice we'll make that the current layer so i have both these curves selected i just shift clicked and i will actually change that to module one practice there we go so we have both our curves, and I've drawn, the, uh, drawn them to make sure they are on the scene plane. So you can uh, double check that by going to um, OSnap and settings, and make sure that your pro project object snaps to C plane is checked. So then you can actually make sure you're definitely any object you draw will be connected to that C plane. So one, no, one won't be off in the Z axis somewhere, and one the rest will be snapped to the ground. So uh, so we have that done. There's step one. So we can actually take all of this and I might even just move it down. Actually, uh, it is good practice sometimes to even just 
make a copy so then you can actually see your progress. Um, for this next one, we're actually going to be creating this little vertical device here. And so uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, you can actually draw a polyline, uh, use a polyline or curves to draw this in um, your front or right views. Then you extrude that curve. And then that is the basic idea to get your vertical louver. And the rest of these are just additional um, sort of uh, modifications you can do to, to further customize your, your louver and what it looks like. In uh, Asif Khan's, it looks like he actually has a little bit of a, um, a bend to his. So we might actually give ours a little bit of a bend as well. So uh, let's go into our um, let's go into our front view and we'll just, it looks like our model's over here. So we'll just draw over here in space somewhere. And I might actually turn my ortho and grid snaps on for this. So let's go into our uh, drawings. I believe the polyline was the first one indicated. So uh, here it looks like uh, our grid snaps um, are set to, I think I have them on six inches. So we can make those a little bit smaller. So we can actually take that and if we turn our uh, grid snaps off. We can make that a little bit of a nicer dimension. We'll go to two inches. Okay, and so that's the basic shape. And in, from there, actually type in extrude curve. And if we go to our top view, let's see where this decided to draw. So I decided to draw on our C plan, which is down here. And so uh, when setting this up, you always want to make sure your your um, objects are near your C plan. If you are going to have your objects snap the C plane checked on, you want to make sure that you are drawing kind of close to that. So uh, we'll make this um, uh, some dimension. Let's give it um, maybe an inch. And I believe this actually would be bigger than two inches too. So maybe we'll give it a little bit more. So we'll go from two inches to type in four inches. There we go. So let's uh, bring that guy back up to where it should be. Uh, and I believe I have the solid checked. I think the curve is still, well, I think the curve actually came with it. Uh, uh, when you extrude a curve, you actually have the ability to uh, turn the original uh, object off. So actually, if we just go ahead and go back to that, I can show you. Um, so right now we have just our uh, curve selection. So if I actually extrude curve, when you extrude it, you can actually have the option to um, delete input. So if that is checked as yes, it'll actually delete the original curve. If it's checked as no, the curve will remain while the solid has also been selected. So we will want to delete that curve so we don't have to deal with it anymore. We just needed it for one a one use purpose. So again, um, we can actually make this back to that one inch dimension and we'll use our scale 1D to um, get back to four inches. So Okay, so let's, uh, let's pick it up here a little bit. So let's get to the fun part. So now we can actually uh, take this and we will move it to our the edge of our curve. And from here we can rotate it so that it actually is, um, we turn our ortho off and we can actually make it so that it appears to be um, uh, parallel or perpendicular with the uh, with the um, plane, and then from here we can actually start to plane. Uh, uh, we can use our bend tool to actually give it a little bit of a bend. See, like that. Uh, if we go into perspective, we can actually um, use uh, other tools too. We have the chamfer edge if we want to give it a smooth. S. Uh, I want to give it a smooth edge, so we'll click these guys. I have one inch selected, so if I click enter, it's actually too big. So we want to actually give it a little bit smaller. So let's do chamfer edge, right? And then we'll do distance. We'll make it. Um, We'll make it a quarter of an inch since I think we only have an inch on our on our thickness here. So I'll go ahead and select all the edges too. 
enter and see what that does. Okay. So now we actually have somewhat of a smooth surface. And one more little trick. Uh, I believe this kind of looks a little bit too thick still, so I'm actually going to use the gumball tool and shorten that up. So this is conceptual, so it doesn't need to be exact. So uh, what we can do is, again, uh, we can actually, um, now we can array this. And I'm going to array, array uh, along a curve. So now it's asking us to select the path of the curve. It's going to be this guy. So we can choose number of items, or we can choose distance between. I'm going to go with distance between. Um, let's try six inches, and we want to do road like, so it actually just follows it just like that. So let's see what that does. And then it's asking us uh, to click in the viewport to choose a seaplane. So we'll just click in space, and there you have it. There's the beginnings of it, right? So we can just repeat this. All right, so I've actually fast forwarded to a finished version. And so again, we just took our louvers and arrayed them uh, uh, along a curve. So now we're ready to make these into a pipe. So what we can actually do is go into top view and we want these to go through kind of the center. So we'll actually use the offset command and we will go about, uh, let's see, maybe, let's see what four inches does. Looks about right. So we can actually take that and we can actually select it and type in pipe. And it's gonna ask us for a radius. Uh, let's go with a, a quarter inch. And in radius, we will also do a quarter inch. So just type those in, press enter, and let's go into our perspective view. Okay, so we actually want to bring those up. Oh, that was the curve. We want to actually select the uh, pipe itself, right? And so if we had more time, we could offset that and get it into a, a better uh, uh, to a better uh, location, but uh, that's the general idea. So then we have our pipe, and what we can actually do is finish off with the center circle. Uh, looks like they have a little actual um, kind of uh, little resting place here in the middle. So I'll turn on my grid snaps and ortho, and I'll make this about. Um, and we'll make a space about that big. And actually what we'll do, we'll actually do a center circle. So it's roughly that big. And we'll do extrude curve, the familiar command. And then we'll actually do a one inch extrusion. And we have our, going to perspective, we can actually lift that up. We want that to be about a foot off the ground for sitting, and then we'll make another one for actual uh, uh, resting or shading. And we'll finish off with, if we go into our solid tools, you can actually make the uh, supports that hold this up. And so we'll turn off our, our ortho and grid snap so we can kind of control where this is supposed to go. And half inch looks good. And then we'll go into our, so I just made a cylinder. Uh, and so you can actually see kind of where that stands. And so we'll actually use the polar array, which is a command. So it'll actually be array polar, right? And so we'll choose the center of our circle. Let's turn our grid snap back on. So we had to choose the center of it. We want three items to make it a, uh, give it three supports. So we'll actually choose the first angle, and then we'll go down to our second angle. So that's actually be 40, and then just click enter, and that should do it. And that is the first pavilion. Uh, and again, these are all kind of general concepts, but you can see how even in this stage, you can begin to customize uh, parts of it, and then all you have to do is mass array it, and you can create a very uh, curvy architecture. Um, 
uh, with these uh, simple tools. And so uh, stay tuned for the next pavilion, which will feature curves and surfaces.